Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'd like to discuss my first impressions of World War 3. This is an indie shooter from The Farm 51, and frankly it doesn't feel that much like an indie shooter. Everything I've seen so far has impressed me quite a lot. Like me, the developers are fans of many different shooters, especially the Battlefield franchise, and World War 3 has many similarities that you'd recognize from Battlefield, and well, frankly Call of Duty for that matter. And yet the gameplay exists somewhere between probably Battlefield and Arma. Certainly a lot closer to Battlefield on that specific spectrum as the pacing is slower than Battlefield and more methodical. Well, usually. The occasional flying bomb drone will land on you and then all of a sudden you're wondering, when did I start playing Call of Duty? There's a lot of different game elements mixed into World War 3 and it's entirely possible that they don't all mesh well together. But based on what I've heard from developers, it sounds like they intend to use early access to refine and figure out what the player base wants from this title. So it's likely many things will change over the next year. Surprisingly, the game doesn't feel like your typical early access shooter. Yeah, it had bugs, but in my very limited playtime, I really didn't experience anything severe. Maybe something like a texture not loading or a kill streak failing the trigger, but beyond that, it actually felt more polished than some other shooters that are supposedly launching in the very near future. One of the coolest parts of this game is something that actually wasn't part of the Gamescom demo, and that's the customization system. I was fortunate enough to see a behind closed doors demonstration of the system, and I have to say, it's basically a Milsim gamer's wet dream. Think Tarkov weapon modding without the shitty UI and unnecessary complications. In fact, the UI design was surprisingly good for a AAA game, let alone an indie studio. Weapons have both cosmetic and functional attachments. Stocks, grips, and handguards are aesthetic only, since those attachments in real life are based on personal preference. But other mods like longer barrels, muzzles, magazines, and more affect the actual weapon's performance, which is also displayed in a detail stat readout in real time as you mod your gun. Think Simthic stats built into the game showing you damage drop off on a graph as you swap parts in and out of your guns. It's pretty cool and something that I've been wanting in games like Battlefield for a long time. Beyond that, the character models and authentic designs from camouflage to armored helmets and plate carriers were some of the best I've ever seen in a video game. Outfitting a Russian Spetsnaz was like playing G.I. Joe for adults. The builds look legit, and the dev said you can basically make anything a soldier from the selected factions would actually wear in real life. There were a ton of options and many tasteful ways to make your soldier look different, but also up to military spec. One of the devs showed me his favorite arm tattoo, which was a full black sleeve that morphed into a grim reaper by the shoulder. It looked really badass, but it also fit in with the realistic aesthetics of the game. And although this customization system was locked for the actual gameplay, I can imagine I'm going to spend a lot of time tweaking and fine tuning my loadouts once this game comes out in early access. But what about the game aesthetics? World War 3 runs on the Unreal 4 engine, and the demo showed off some nice distance rendering, good particle effects and believable explosions, and uh, some very shiny wet surfaces from the rainy weather. If anything was lacking from the demo visually, it was, well, the color palette. I know the game has brighter maps with a little more color, as I've seen in screenshots and the other trailers, but a gray rainy day in a gray city center left very little visual treats to look at. The art wasn't bad and in fact was quite pretty if you like analogous color schemes with little splotches of yellow explosions here and there, but looking at gray on gray on more gray leaves one feeling a little blue, if you will. Now, I know they plan on releasing three maps with early access, so perhaps some of the other options will brighten things up and show off the devs' art direction a bit better. It was just an unfortunate choice, I think, for their Gamescom demonstration, as I talked to some other players who had finished playing the game, and they basically were just saying, hey, it's, it's really gray and hard to see people. Also, the game takes place in the very near future. I think the devs said 2026, so, you know, maybe some animated billboards or something like that just to 
liven up the visual palette for this downtown Warsaw would certainly be appreciated. Now, game performance wise, really, I'm gonna have to review this when I can play it in early access on my home PC. The computers at the event had the visuals decently cranked up, but we're only running i5 CPUs with 1070 GPUs. So we were getting around 40 to 50 FPS during play at 1080p. Even so, it was still quite playable, and one of the devs said that he gets 80 to 90 FPS on his build, so I'm not too worried about the performance at this point, but I would expect the devs to be able to push past 100 FPS with the 1080 Ti. Uh, it's just something I would expect from a modern Unreal Engine shooter. Let's talk about gunplay and gameplay. The loadouts in the game were all pre-built for the demo, but like I said before, everything you'll run will be fully customizable in the future. You get two primary weapons and a special weapon like an RPG or a 50 cal sniper. You can essentially run whatever you want, armor and weapon wise, but the more you take into combat, the slower you will run. As you swap between the different loadouts, you'll definitely notice the movement speed changes, and I like one of the medium builds the best. It used a cool Polish assault rifle I had never heard of called the MSBS, which has easy to control recoil and packs a punch at range. When swapping to machine guns, I definitely noticed a recoil difference, which I didn't like as much initially, but I do look forward to learning to use them a bit better. Also, they're supposed to be a lot more accurate when going prone, and I wasn't really doing a lot of prone gameplay. Movement wise, you can sprint, duck, lean, go prone on your back or your front. Uh, I saw sliding in a trailer, which I didn't test out in game. And overall, the movement feels pretty damn solid. You can also vault over obstacles. Soldiers tend to behave a little slower, which I prefer, as it puts a bigger emphasis on peeking and cover. Distance shooting is effective with most primary weapons, so firefights can be lethal even at extreme ranges. A really interesting element is that body armor gives you increased resistance on your front, so flanking enemies will generally result in higher damage, encouraging flanking maneuvers and such. In stand-up firefights, learning about body armor weak points will likely play a role in speeding up your time to kill. When it does come to TTK, it can often feel just as fast as Battlefield until you land a lot of shots into someone's steel chest plate and then all of a sudden you're taking a few more shots to kill your enemy. When you die, your kill card gives you a detailed readout of the damage done to you which will quickly teach you about weak points and hopefully uh, I'll be able to use that info in the future to refine my aim or even modify my loadouts for more effective defense. I like the gunplay. It's familiar with an added element of armor resistance to keep you on your toes against heavier targets. I think once I'm able to get into the modding aspect of this game and really outfit weapons the way that I want, I think that's where the weapon and the gunplay is going to hit its sweet spot for me. Vehicles like tanks and APCs are also in the game, complete with full customization options from armor to weapons as well. These are designed to be called in via squad streaks, but there were also some in the base at the start of the round. I'm not sure if this is how the game is designed at the start or if they just put some vehicles in there for the demo so that people could try them out right away. The vehicles uh, feel really good for the most part. You do have a third person camera with them, but no aiming reticle, so really you're meant to aim from the first person perspective. Most soldiers in the game are equipped with RPGs, so expect some stiff resistance from infantry, uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't mop them up. The range on tank machine guns or explosive rounds from APCs can absolutely decimate infantry at really, really far ranges. Also, the turrets appear to be locked at realistic turn rates, so tank and APC drivers aren't going to be able to turn around on a dime and hit some infantry flanking them immediately. I'll be a lot more interested in testing them out and feeling out their balance when I'm up against an infantry team that knows how to take them out a lot better as playing during Gamescom everybody was still learning how to play the game. Now when it comes to the overall gameplay I was only able to test the Warzone game mode but the devs have been working on a battle royale style mode which was apparently conceptualized even before PUBG was a thing so Hopefully that means it's a very different take on the genre. When it comes to Warzone, it's very similar to Battlefield's Conquest. In fact, it's almost identical except that they have uh, paired capture points that you need to capture both of to cause ticket bleed. A slight change to the concept and I'm not sure anyone really understood it while playing 
so I have no idea if it makes the game meta more interesting. You can spawn on captured flag zones unless there's a UAV jammer overhead. You can also spawn on a squad leader, and I think the devs are also wanting to make some vehicles spawnable at some point in the game. Killstreaks like UAVs, jammers, airstrikes, flying bombs, and even more will eventually become more prevalent on this battlefield. There's definitely a lot of room for balance here as there ended up being so many UAVs that it felt like uh, wall hacks were on at times. The prevalence of them certainly negated any flanking opportunities and allowed me to easily mop up any enemies that were spotted on said UAVs. Especially since the gameplay is relatively slow, it made it very easy to hunt down players. Squad points seem to come pretty easy, so killstreaks were popping off quite frequently. It's also possible the devs lowered the value so players could test them out more often in the demo. I like the idea of squad killstreaks, especially when it comes to intel mechanics or smoke screens, but I was less of a fan of the bombing runs or flying bombs as it took me out of the FPS element and subjected me to a bunch of random deaths. That being said, it was nowhere near the amount of random death I would experience from the average Battlefield game, so there is that. Spawning on at capture points had a few issues with spawning right in front of players, so I guess conquest spawn issues persist across different games in that regard. It's also possible that the map may end up with a few choke points, but again, this is something I need to test more in early access once the meta better establishes itself. The game definitely has some areas that will need balance as one would expect from a brand new IP this early in development, but overall I came away from the experience feeling very excited and wanting to play more. For those of you looking at this game like it's a Battlefield 4 replacement, well that very well could be the case, provided that you're willing to sacrifice air vehicles and some of the scale and fantastical settings. And who knows, maybe air could be something added in later stages. Right now it feels like a solid infantry and vehicle shooter with deep customization game and a game mode with a lot of options and room for refinement. I'll definitely be looking to test out teamwork and squad play in early access and try and get a better feeling of the game's meta. Let me know what you guys think. This game has certainly been receiving a huge amount of hype and I actually think it could live up to it provided that the devs stay on top of game balance and maybe provide us with a little bit more excitement in terms of map design and visuals. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.